Well, folks, we've talked a lot about the Chinese billionaire who escaped China, uh, and he's been here in the United States trying to take down the Chinese Communist Party. I'm talking about Miles Guo. Uh, this is a guy who let the FBI know that the virus was on the way, and the FBI ignored Miles Guo. Well, Miles Guo was arrested today. Uh, by the Department of Justice inside his New York City penthouse. He's accused of uh, wire fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, uh, lying about returns to investors. I don't know anything about those charges. But I do know while FBI agents were inside of his apartment, a fire breaks out. Check out this video. Literally, while FBI agents are inside, the local news reports say a fire broke out. Cut one. But just six hours earlier, federal agents took Gu Wenji into custody at the luxury residence. It was those very same agents who later reported the fire and had to evacuate. The agents were inside when the fire starts. I got serious questions about what's going on because the CCP wants him. There were times that the government wanted to arrest him. Trump and Steve Bannon helped stop that. What's happening here? Well, with me now is a representative of the new federal state of China, the organization created by Miles Guo and Steve Bannon to bring down the Chinese Communist Party. Our friend Nicole Tsai is here. Nicole, welcome. Hi, Grant. Thank you for having me. Nicole, what's happening here? Well, today is a dark day in the U.S. history. The FBI raided Mr. Miles Guo's house uh, in New York. And we know Mr. Miles Guo is CCP enemy number one. Is the most wanted enemy by Xi Jinping and the CCP kleptocrats. And then the FBI raided Mr. Mao's was home unannounced, handcuffed him, and took him to court for interrogation. As we speak now, Mr. Mao Guo is still being held in custody. He's fine. But today, all the American people should know that the CCP is after you. Mao Guo is just in the way. Today's incident shows the CCP has successfully weaponized the U.S. justice system, the DOJ, the FBI, the SEC, and they have all launched an assault on the U.S. justice system. This is more than just Nicole, a, the CCP spy balloon. Yes. Give me a little background here, because originally the CCP wanted Miles Guo deported from America and exported back to China. Tell me that story and how that stopped from happening. Absolutely. So back in 2017, when Mr. Mao Guo first started blowing the whistles against the CCP kleptocrats, Xi Jinping wanted the Trump administration to remove Mr. Mao Guo from the U.S. and back to China. And they entailed the help of a DOJ employee named George Higginbotham, he was a senior congressional staff working for the DOJ. This guy walked into the CCP's embassy in Washington, D.C., and helped to trans uh, uh, facilitate the transfer of tens of millions of dollars from a foreign bank account to the U.S. to fund the lobby campaign on DOJ and the former White House, hoping to return Mr. Mao's goal back to China. Luckily, the Trump administration uh, rejected this request. So we certainly, we certainly hope this uh, Biden administration can also keep Mr. Mao's goal in the U.S. Because yeah, uh, what we're witnessing, yeah. He, he would, so he would be certainly is, persecuted if he goes back to China. There's no doubt in my mind I don't know what they would do to him there. I'm sure a, pr a prison for life would probably be lucky uh, knowing Xi Jinping with Miles Guo. 中共的头号敌人新中国联邦创始人郭文贵先生 那么FBI探员是代表中共来逮捕郭先生的吗? 
？难道他们想烧毁什么文件？郭先生被捕的消息迅速在主流媒体和社交媒体上疯传，许多亲共账号和美国极左相关的账号都在谈官相庆。郭先生。一直致力于揭露中共腐败和盗国贼家族的恶行，而遭到中共追杀。二零一四年，他被迫逃到美国寻求政治庇护。自从移居美国后，郭先生持续爆料，因此中共对其的猛烈攻击从未间断过。疑点三：为什么中共的大外宣？和中共国国内的宣传如此一致的扯谎，为什么世界上最邪恶的组织——中国共产党追杀的人，被美国联邦调查局和司法部迫害了？三月十五日的针对郭先生的法庭聆讯，由凯瑟琳 ·H· 帕克法官主持。帕克法官提醒纽约南区检察官，一定要持续地向郭先生披露。任何可能有助于质疑公诉人提供的证人和证词的信息，或其他对郭先生有利的信息，包括纽约南区检察官与外国政府的联系，或其他可能参与起诉或调查郭先生案件的任何有利益冲突的联系。在肃静的法庭上，检察官被迫在法官面前承认。他们在调查郭文贵先生期间，一直与中共国合作。疑点四：敢于给全世界放毒、公然把间谍气球发射到美国领空的中共政权无法无天，而检方竟然和中共政权合作构陷郭文贵先生，而且众所周知，中共擅长的就是提供假证人、假证据。检方的指控有任何可信度吗？帕克法官并不满足于法庭上的口头警告，还在三月十六日发出了书面法庭令，明确要求检方有披露信息的义务，并警告说不遵守规定将造成严重后果。这篇文章还提到了太平联盟在纽约南区联邦法院的一个备受瞩目的诉讼案。该案主审法官巴里·奥斯特拉格也与中共国有经济上的利益冲突。在担任法官前，他的整个律师职业生涯都是在圣信律师事务所。该事务所几乎包揽了中共国在美上市的绝大部分业务，还将一家涉嫌盗窃商业机密而被司法部调查的中共国公司列入其客户名单，并引以为豪。郭文贵先生的被捕。清楚地提醒美国人，中共可以随时使用任何手段，通过渗透到美国司法系统中的美国人来打压其政治对手。检察官承认，他们在和中共积极合作，以图将郭先生关进监狱。这一事件所带来的后果是灾难性的。疑问五：中共国是否有执法人员已经在美国本土，以帮助美国司法部起诉郭先生？美国联邦政府与中共的合作程度如何？最后，这篇文章给美国和西方世界再次敲响了警钟：中国共产党决心要弄死美国，而郭先生恰好挡住了他们的路。2023年3月17日 ，Gateway Pundit 发表了一篇名为《世纪勾结：美国司法部、中国共产党和大媒体联手打击郭文贵》的重磅文章。作者马特·帕伦博。文章揭示了针对中共头号敌人郭文贵的阴谋。文章认为，美司法部、中共和大媒体合谋打击郭文贵，视其为最令他们畏惧的敌人。文章开头提到，在司法部首次在其网站上公布魏启峰的起诉书和逮捕郭文贵的半小时前。彭博社就已经发表了一篇一千二百字的文章，详述了纽约南区法院对郭先生的指控。文章还称，司法部任命 Look 为郭文贵破产案的受托人 ，Look 试图敲诈郭文贵二点五亿美元，并威胁称利用他在司法部证券交易委员会、国税局和司法系统的关系，将其送入监狱。文章强调 ，Look 是中共的代理人，其所在的普亨律师事务所每年通过代表中共国有企业赚取了数十亿美元。
。文章揭示了在提审郭文贵的过程中，法官凯瑟琳 ·H· 帕克对美国检察官隐瞒与中共政府合作的重要信息表示担忧。检察官们最终承认，在调查郭文贵期间与中共国有很多合作，这震惊了法庭上的人们。此外，文章还指出，司法部有被中共渗透和被武器化的历史，特别是针对郭文贵。作者提到，在二零一七年，时任美司法部高级国会事务专家的乔治·黑根巴森曾秘密前往中国深圳会见公安部副部长孙立军，以密谋将郭文贵送回中共国。黑根巴森还会见了中共国驻美大使崔天凯，以推进这项邪恶计划。孙立军和其他几位中共高官也曾前往美国，试图非法将郭文贵遣返回中共国。此外，这篇文章提出了关于郭文贵最近被捕及其纽约住所火灾的情况引发的疑问。作者质疑联邦调查局是否参与了该火灾，并暗示他们可能在公寓里找到了有对中共不利的情报，因此方便的将他们消失得无影无踪。最后，文章得出结论称，美国司法部与中共政府合作起诉郭文贵，相当于二战时期美国政府与纳粹合作迫害犹太人的现代版本。作者呼吁调查司法部在对郭文贵先生的起诉中与中共参与了多大程度的合作。不论如何，请记住，中共的邪恶远超纳粹，而郭文贵先生带领着新中国联邦人在拯救人类。Take down the evil CCP. When the GTV is launched, and we were just sending all those information out, but we still censored by big tech. You know,、mm-hmm. the, it's unbelievable. But、uh, because the SEC, the false、um, uh, complaint, the SEC started. Uh, investigation we call the witch hunt. So they started、mm-hmm. in actually 2020 September, and then in 2021, I think early 2021, they ordered a cease and desist letter to GTV, and that's where they they threatening GTV. You know, they, they but we enter, but GTV and SEC entered agreement at that time. So、uh, so the SEC said, okay, I'm gonna、uh, establish. They called a fair fund. Um, it's about 462 million, if I remember the the, the number correct. It's about 462 million dollars. So they say I'm going to return those money to the harmed investor, which I'm not one of those harmed investor. Those harmed investor are fake CCP agents.、Okay? Oh, so they gave your money to CCP agents, and then you still haven't gotten paid. No, they they didn't give the money to the CCP agents. They just you they just took whatever the the false claim made by the CCP agents,、mm-hmm. and then they seized the fund from the other ninety nine percent, the real investors who are the followers of this movement. It's incredibly easy. They seized、evil. the money. Yes, and they said on the statement, if you go、uh, just go on website, on the CCP website,、mm-hmm. they said.、Um, Um, we're gonna establish a fair fund, and we will distribute those fund back to those five thousand five hundred investors. That was a year and a half ago, more than a year and a half ago. And today, I still not receiving my money. And、That's、guess、terrible. what? There's only one tenth of the money returned. There's the rest, millions of money still, still freezed and on hold, you know, by the SEC. So who is the victim here? So、right. we are the and- victim of the SEC. And right,、CCP. and 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 why is the CCP controlling the SEC? You know, it's absolutely. I, I mean, really, this is proving the point. The CCP will go, will stop at nothing to destroy Miles Guo, but anybody that stands in the way of of how they want to control every aspect of people's lives, even when you're in America, they're still going to try to control you.、Yeah. I mean. Why we under I understand why Guo was a threat to the CCP. He was going to alert and trying to alert, you know, President Trump and many others about the threats of China. But th- from all of this information, and it comes out daily. So has、um, America already been captured, Ava? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So right now, your executive branch is compromised. Your judicial、mm-hmm. branch, by this case, by the instance, happened on March fifteenth. Even prior to that, we already know because、mm-hmm. we have been, you know, when we went to the M Fest last year, December, and also、mm-hmm. CPAC March just you know weeks ago. And this is the message we have been spreading: is your system right now is infiltrated and penetrated severely by the Chinese Communist Party. Okay, and and you need to act. Today we gather here in front of the Grand Army Plaza, right downstairs. From the Sheridan Netherland Hotel, we are hundreds of new supporters of the new Federal State of China. 
who are donors of the Rule of Law Foundation, who are investors of GTE Media Group, who are victims to the weaponized Department of Justice and their infiltration by the Chinese Communist Party. Today, 600 million Chinese whistleblowers free the loving Chinese people from all of the world, unite together and stand with us with one mission. Free Miles Guo. 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 Just days ago, on March 15th, the hundreds of FBI swarmed Mr. Gore's 18th floor residence right here at the Sheridan Hotel. Six hours after they have taken Mr. Gore into detention, the FBI lit a fire that burned down the entire 18th residence. We're right here at the Grand Central Army Plaza with General, General William Sherman, who is known for burning the evil people who want to keep slavery in America during the Civil War. 600 million of us, the urge of us to be free will burn down the corrupt DOJ and the CCP collaborators within the country. Take down the CCP! Take down the CCP! Take down the CCP! Take down the CCP! That's why I'm here. I want to get the story out. I want to get the story out to everyone. I, I said to Apollo, I don't, I don't care whether they are right or left or whether, as long as they're good people. Okay, sometimes good people chose to pick the wrong route, but that's okay. Giving enough patience, giving enough love. I hope they would turn around and see what's good and evil because this fight is for all people call them human. If you believe God, this is your fight. So I want to get the word out. I don't, I don't care where I'm going. As long as it's a live interview, I will go because we've been, um, uh, you know, we've, we've been framed by Vice Media, who I just showed you, who you just played on your show, seven minute long clip. Vice booked an interview and recorded Miles. That was a three hours interview on, uh, in May 2021. But guess what? The final product Vice released in December 2021, only 13 minutes. It was deceptively edited, 13-minute sound bites that aim to, uh, you know, aim to defame and slander Miles Gore and the whistleblower movement. That's why I'm not going to say, I would say no to all the recorded interview because I don't know who is coming after us or, or doing something really insidious behind this if they wanted to record uh, the, the, the interview. I, I, I'm only doing live interviews to tell the story. So whoever, I want to let your audience know, whoever wanted me, want the new federal state of China to talk about this, I would go. I don't care, uh, you know, whether which political um, part, uh, you know, left or right, I don't care. As long as you're a human being, this is your fight because we're fighting the Satan's um, soldier, which is Chinese Communist Party. I prepare to lose my life at any minute. Uh, cause I give the thought before I came out and to become the enemy and stand with Miles. Cause all the brothers and sisters you, you see in the short video, um, that 160 of them, of us standing, um, at the Grand Army Plaza in front of the Sherwin Netherland Hotel. We all pass that stage because fear does not get us anywhere. The p persecutions back in China that happened to our families, our friends were not stopped. And people are dying every day. Okay. So we have a no choice but to fight. So I think comes down to, uh, the, um, the, the, the tactics that how we do this, we have been actually saying we have 600 million Chinese people follow this movement. There is steam gathering, momentum building back in China. All we need, we have the confidence that the people and the whistleblower that the people that behind our cause that were still working in the Chinese Communist Party are ready, are ready to uh, denounce the CCP and take down the evil regime. Only if American government stop still funding the Chinese Communist Party financially and economically, uh, sorry, techno technologically. If you, that's where I think we can unite it is we need American people to call your congressman, to call your subcommittee, to call Jim Jordan, say, hey, take a look at this. We know who are the American traitors. Take a look at what Miles was lawfare. Take what he has to say to you. Take a look at the battle that we have been fighting for the last six years. We know who they are. 
Please do something. Please investigate. Investigate the investigators. We need people like you, like Joe, like David, like Apollo. That's what I said to Apollo before the show. I said we need to get this information out. We need to get the right information in the right people. They could activate self. Call the congressman. Send the emails. Show up on the rally. You know, we were have we have been pro- peacefully protesting for the past ninety days. Um, of our brother and sister all over the America, across America, we're trying to tell American people: say, "Hey, wake up! Your pension plan is at risk because those American sellouts are actually selling your pension plan, selling your retirement money to communist China for the few percentage of commissions that they earn." Okay, so this is a reality. So we have been telling American peoples we want them to become our ally, so that we can fight this war against the communism, against the Chinese communism and their collaborators together. Because we have the people, we have the wheel. We're fighting for our kids' future, not all only our own future, but our kids' future.、Uh, now. The so-called victims, and they don't name anyone by name in the indictment that's 38 pages long, are protesting the arrest of the man that allegedly scammed them out of a billion dollars. They're protesting, and even beyond that, you have so-called alleged victims of Miles Guo offering up money for bail, and yet the government has des- denied him bail. Well, I want to bring in. Uh, from the new federal state of China, our friend Nicole Sai. Nicole, welcome to the program. Thank you, Grant, for having me. You're welcome, Nicole. So,、uh, first off, I want to talk about the bail issue.、Uh, one, you're an alleged victim. You're you're an investor in this GTV, an entity uh, uh, launched by Miles Guo.、Uh, yet you're here defending him. It seems every victim out there is, is defending him, even offering up bail money, and yet they're holding him. What is up with this? Well, this is a total fraud. It's a fraud not by Mr. Mao Zedong, but a fraud by the SEC, by the DOJ, and the FBI. Because hey, I'm a GTV investor. I'm one of the 5,500 GTV investors who have been frauded by the SEC, by the DOJ, and persecuted by the FBI. So we're running su-、uh, support and social media campaign called Free Mao Zedong hashtag. Free Mao Zedong because we're not the victims of Mr. Mao Zedong. We are the victims of the weaponized SEC, DOJ, FBI, and the U.S. federal government agencies. The CCP has take complete control of the federal government agencies and use it as a tool to persecute the Chinese dissidents. We are CCP enemy number one. So the CCP will be happy. They're cheering for the successful prosecution of Mr. Mao Zedong、so- and. For the persecution of all of us, the GTV investors. Nicole, this is very interesting because I'm looking. Okay, they're denying bail to Miles Guo, yet the chief financial officer of Huawei, okay,、uh, the the princess of of China,、uh, she is allowed to be sent back to China. She's in Canada. The DOJ wants her because of what? Sending sensitive electronic equipment. To Iran is the allegations. You want to talk about、uh, something that could be very damaging to American citizens, our absolute、yeah. enemy, and the DOJ makes a deal to send her back to China, and she gets basically on her own recognizance. I don't know. They drop the charge, whatever. She's back. Yeah. So the real criminals are walking free. They're walking the straight. While the good people are being put in the jail, and let's not forget that today, the CEO of the TikTok was testifying before the U.S. Congress, and in the Washington Post, a Western journalist wrote an opinion piece defending TikTok and explained why banning TikTok on the U.S. soil was wrong. And most ironically, Washington Post also accept. The CCP's money, and you know, they did a wraparound advertisement for TikTok. We're talking about Washington Post, a prominent U.S. mainstream media 
They're taking the money from the CCP and they're promoting the CCP's propaganda and surveillance tool on the U.S. soil. So in this country, there's a two-tier justice system, one for the CCP and the uh, sellout who are in bed with the CCP, and the other one is for the rest of us. Just look at you know what happened to General Flynn, to the J6 people, and to the parents who have been char- characterized by FBI as terrorists. So I'm deeply appalled by what's happening today. You, you know, um, it's interesting because when you sum up all of those things, combined with the CEO, CFO of Huawei being sent back to China, the darling of, of China, they wanted her. Um, John Bolton had something to say about this uh, back in the day. Let me just play his clip because he sums it up pretty well about sending her back to China. But the deferred prosecution agreement that the U.S. Department of Justice entered into with yep. uh, Meng Wanzhou was a, uh, a concession that didn't need to be made. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the extradition was highly likely. And I think had there been a trial on the merits, uh, Meng would have been convicted of, of, uh, of all the counts against her. So to give up in, in a circumstance like that uh, suggests to me that uh, that uh, there were other considerations involved than strictly the legal consideration. 网关专家新闻网站3月23日发表了一篇文章，题为《在拒绝反共的抗议而又允许中共的无人机骚扰抗议者之后，马里兰大学面临 1,000 万美元的官司》。作者马特·帕伦博。文章说，新中国联邦人在获得了在马里兰大学巴尔的摩郡分校进行反共抗议的许可后，却于2月7日在该校抗议中共间谍尚未见时被阻止。尽管抗议者们举着推翻中共的旗帜和标语，进行了和平的抗议，在抗议时，警官到了现场，威胁抗议者们要逮捕他们，并取消了。抗议许可理由是一月十三日颁布的有关新中国联邦创始人郭文贵先生的破产令。可事实上，郭先生的个人破产案与旨在消灭中共的新中国联邦人的和平抗议是两回事所以，马里兰大学阻止这场抗议的做法是违反美国宪法。奇怪的是，那天抗议者们在被大学校警赶走之前，有一架无人机在抗议者周围飞行。抗议者们说，无人机为了骚扰他们，飞到离他们只有几英寸远。一名警察证实，出现在新中国联邦抗议者面前的无人机不属于警方。校园因靠近机场，属于联邦 B 类禁飞区。然而，中共向来无视美国法律限制，有很多案例证明中共惯用这种类似的无人机来监视其反对者。早在2017年7月15日和7月30日，郭文贵先生在他女儿的游艇上曾经就受到中共无人机的骚扰。无人机事件体现出马里兰大学巴尔的摩郡分校受中共的施压来对抗新中国联邦。由于中共间谍尚伟健的女儿是马里兰大学的博士生，她向学校抱怨新中国联邦人的和平抗议。因此，学校在中共的压力下便阻止了抗议。无人机事件发生后，新中国联邦抗议者针对马里兰大学巴尔的摩郡分校及其相关方发起了一项法律诉讼，诉讼对象包括尚伟健和他的女儿，他们违反了抗议者受宪法保护的权利，且面临着不低于一千万美元的索赔。文章最后指出，我们必须站在一起，要求释放中共的头号敌人郭文贵，因为我们不这样做，中共就会赢。This is a completely false allegation. It was just trying to get miles because if you look at the last six years, okay, we have a six years lawfare. They trying to get miles in the seventy six lawsuits, okay, and then one of the prominent one、um, that Miles Guo has been fighting for the last five years is called P P A X. Searching it, P A X versus Guo K W O K. That's another spelling in Cantonese for Guo G U O. So search that, and they didn't get miles. Because Miles,、uh, at the last、uh, court order from New- Supreme Court of New York, they fined Miles two hundred sixty million U.S. dollars, ludicrous. Okay, and then、mm-hmm. ask him to pay within five days; otherwise, he fail jail time. So Miles declared bankruptcy afterwards because he couldn't. And then DOJ is still hunting him. They actually pointed a、uh, trustee who. Written all over the place, conflict of interest with Miles, but he become he successfully became the trustee. The the chapter. We're going to put this、uh, an article in the links down below from from、uh, this this newspaper article, but it's it's Luke Despens who the DOJ、right. appointed、uh, DOJ appointed as the trustee, and I'll、yes. say and, and Despens used used the opportunity to be placed as a trustee as an attempt to extort the two hundred fifty million dollars from Mr. Guo. Um, yes. Basically, to send Miles to jail using his connections at the DOJ, SEC, IRS, and the entire court system—that、yes. is what we see on every front here in America.、Mm-hmm. If you stand against them, 
then uh -huh. you're you're deleted from YouTube. You're deleted from this. You're you're going to be spoken about poorly what? on the news media. Mm -hmm. They're going to come against you, and, and you see that in every facet. The the lawfare going out to crush the mm -hmm. enemies of that regime, and they will freely will use the DOJ, the SEC, the IRS, and and the entire court system against you. And so we, we're seeing what you've experienced, what's been going on in, in, in China for a long time. We see it openly and freely here now. Very lucky to have Nicole Tsai with us. She's a member of the new federal state of China. But you've dug so deep into the Department of Justice, into the legal system, mm -hmm. and even into the media. Yeah. The CCP has infiltrated all these angles. Give us a little insight on how deep they are into these places. Oh, absolutely. One of the most recent examples is that Washington Post. They're promoting the CCP's propaganda. In America's, the U.S. papers. Exactly. Wow. And also, the CCP's infiltration is not only up in the uh, airspace with the balloon, it's in your living room. <laughs> Everybody's watching it. And the most important thing is the DOJ. And also, I think his name is Tony Badasta. He is the chief lobbyist for Huawei. <laughs> Huawei is yeah. the CCP's surveillance program yeah. designed to they collect the 5G network. Yeah, 5G so. network. That owns the back ends of the computers, right? Yeah, and uh, if, yeah. if you guys want to live in the world uh, described in 1984, then celebrate Huawei's uh, entrance into the U.S. market. <laughs> and you should be applauding for these um, former U.S. senators and congressmen bringing Huawei. Recently, a European country, I don't know if it's Norway or Finland, just outlawed Huawei's back-end stuff. They're not allowed to use it. So let's not forget, when Trump was in the White House, he issued an executive order banning TikTok. But years passed. Why TikTok is still doing business as usual? Because they are the former U.S. senators, U.S. congressmen, former congressional staff, and people with close access to the White House are lobbying on behalf of TikTok's behalf. Well, I think what you're seeing is that Marxism is something that is anti-life. And so you're seeing human rights abuses. You're, and, and even in America, for, for the most part, I think the older generation realizes that how deadly the Mao regime was. And that hasn't changed. That, that's one of the, the illusions. But I think what, what you're seeing is through uh, soft power influencing, especially in media and in Hollywood, um, Americans are getting a different view of communist China, you know. So, for instance, Jack Ma, for instance, looks like a mm -hmm. capitalist. He looks just like, you know, an Elon Musk type. Couldn't be further from the truth. Um, you've got shell companies like the Wanda Group that certainly yeah. look like, you know, big tech, creative uh, type companies. But um, it, there's no doubt that the Communist Party is behind all of that. And so what you see in America is a, a metamorphosis of what's really happening. So in the university, we've got Confucius Institutes. Uh, there's a reason why they use Confucius instead of Mao, because mm -hmm. when we think of Confucius, we think of fortune cookies, we think of something that's innocent. So even even the marketing where, uh, you know, under the guise of language training, our students are being indoctrinated as to the wonders of communist China. So I think part of the problem is that with in, in the midst of all of the human rights abuses that, that you're just talking about, America still isn't awake because we've got this feed um, of, of Chinese influences throughout all of our media. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think much has changed. I think, if anything, more people are dying today than they ever have. Um, but if you don't have a camera or a way to expose what's going on in China, it's yes. as if it's never, it, it's as if it's not happening. And then the, the, the threat that's posed to your loved ones, usually that's one of the hallmarks of the communist regime is that usually if you're courageous enough uh, to stand up against communism or against, you know, group think, you've counted the cost personally. Where it becomes very, very difficult is when you see how it affects your wife and how it affects your children and your parents. And, um, you know, the, all I can say is personally, I've experienced the gamut of severed relationships throughout my family because many of them believe the hit pieces that have been written against me. Now, when you compare that to Miles Guo or any other freedom fighter, you're going to see the same thing. Look, if we can't remove you from the chessboard by killing you, uh, we'll certainly destroy your reputation and, and try to make sure that no one listens to you. Um, and then the other point of contact would be to remove whatever 
distribution vectors that you have to get out good information. So, which is one of the reasons why they're attacking GTV and uh, Moscow's network. And if we don't win, we don't win the fight against uh, the communist infiltration. I'm not ignorant to the to the reality that we're not going to have our country back in the sense that uh, truth tellers will be free to continue to tell the truth. Um, so I'm seeing people being isolated. Miles Guo has been isolated more recently. Um, we're seeing the deployment of lawfare, where it's not about whether you have the merits on your side. This is about exhausting someone's financial resources to where they can't fight back. And that's certainly happening uh, against Miles Guo as well. Uh, Miles Guo who uh, is a Chinese expat, arguably the single most important Chinese expat trying to take down the CCP, is being uh, hounded, persecuted, and now thrown in jail by the Department of Justice. Um, And the backdrop to all of this is a fascinating case with this musician, Prez, I can't even pronounce his name, but he was part of a group with Lauren Hill and Wycliffe back in the 90s. They made a ton of money, and this guy goes off on his own. And uh, he's accused by the federal government of getting in bed with a Chinese scam artist who paid the American singer to manipulate people like Steve Wynn and others. Yeah, Steve Wynn, the guy who owns all the casinos in China, to extradite Miles back to communist China because, obviously, Miles was exposing all of the crimes of the Chinese Communist Party. So what does this trial mean for the freedom of Miles Guo? That's the only thing I care about. Jane. Well, that's right. Pros Michelle is facing trial for numerous charges ranging from conspiracy to money laundering to not registering as an agent of China. He met with the vice minister of security the, of China on behalf of the CCP, who was working to have Miles Guo extradited. And this was because he was working with a gentleman by the name of Joe Lo who was involved in a very notorious financial scandal, the 1MDB scandal involving the Malaysian government in which billions of dollars were embezzled. And Joe Lowe was sort of a Hollywood Great Gatsby type who met Pras Michelle. And when Pras became interested in the political world, Joe saw an opportunity to get involved as well. Jane, Jane, forgive me here. This thing is too complicated to relate. Just tell me, is this going to help Miles get his freedom and why? I think it definitely has a good chance to impact that case because it shows how several co-conspirators operated with CCP officials to have Miles Guo extradited. Figures such as Elliot Brody and George Higginbottom, who have already pled guilty to charges related to this matter. And this is sort of the missing link between the money and the meeting with the CCP official that really shows just how deep CCP interference runs in the judicial system. Can you give us an update really quickly on his conditions right now? How is he faring as he's being held really for what would appear to be very trumped up charges at this point? Yeah, so Mr. Moscow is being held in a federal jail in New York. So he's able to have phone conversation uh, with the uh, supporters and he's always in very good spirit. I mean, this guy, nobody can beat him because he's been through hell. I mean, he spent 22 months in CCP's jail after the Tiananmen massacre for his support of the student-led pro-democracy movement. I mean, he lost the ribs. I mean, he's been through hell, but he still believes in this country. He believes that this country has good people, the patriots, the American people who can bring justice to him. So he's very confident that one day he'll walk out of the federal jail with dignity. And he knew that all the American sellout and traitors will be exposed. Miles 
作为一个政治迫害对象，他们为了钱，为了其他任何能够对郭文先生这样，就能够对在美国土地上任何一个人，包括你们的国会议员，你们任何一个人都可以享受郭文先生目前所遭受的这一切这种待遇。所以这就是我们站出来最根本的一个原因。And the most ironic thing is that all these people are free. You know, Moscow is behind the bar. I want to be historical in a sense here, folks. You come from a part of the world in China. You didn't see freedom. You didn't see justice. You saw a corrupt government system that would put people, be as you say, behind the bar just for speaking out against its government. And in this very country, let me ask you, based on your history, do you not see it happening currently to the American citizens because they don't agree with the current government? Do you see that happening here? Just look at what happened to Mr. Mao Zedong. All the people who have been, you know, becoming the target of a political persecution or political witch hunt by a weaponized DOJ and FBI and federal government agencies. So, if this could happen to Mr. Mao Zedong, it could happen to each and every American citizen. And、uh, so, Mr. Mao Zedong's case ex- exemplifies the very reason that why we have to take down the CCP in this country because the CCP. It's not far away. It's right here. It's inside your DOJ, the FBI, the SEC. There are American proxies working actively on behalf of the CCP. They are the most dangerous inside threats. Remember,、uh, the former U.S. President Abraham Lincoln said, "Nations do not die from invasion; they die from internal rottenness, because they are inside threats. They're sellout. They're traitors who are colluding with the CCP." I mean, there's no way for the CCP to weaponize this country's justice system unless there are system actors, people in the powerful positions, or people have access to the most powerful、uh, offices. They're the ones who needs to be exposed. We are investors of GTV Media Group and victims of the SEC's discriminatory practices and political hate job pressure campaign against us. Since last year, the SEC has been colluding with the Chinese Communist Party to do a political hate job and pressure campaign on us. The SEC's actions has led to many of our investors in China being detained, arrested, some even lost their lives. So, for all of the cowards that work in this building, here's our list of four demands. Number one, we demand the SEC to immediately come clean and disclose all of its communications with the Chinese Communist Party. Especially with the police bureau of the Chinese Communist Party. Number two, we demand the SEC to wholly compensate investors of GTV for their loss. Number three, we demand the SEC to stop its collusion with the Chinese Communist Party and its persecution and discrimination of our investors. Number four, we demand the SEC to immediately stop its bureaucratic malfeasance and meet us in court. Those are our demands for all of the cowards that work in this building, and I hope you heard me loud and clear. Yeah, come on.